And today, in this video, you are going to learn two masterclass games that have been played by Magnus Carlsen, one against Zambia and the other against Mongolia. A very strong grandmaster from Mongolia is playing and Magnus Carlsen is playing Queen's Gambit Declined. So Magnus is playing with the white pieces and all this video series is all about how you can learn from the games of Magnus. And that is very important that we should be looking at how we can improve from the games of the Grandmaster. And so we have started right now and we have a comment, a win in the world is one. So we have one of our subscriber right now and he has given a comment that up the stroke win in the world one. Yes, you are right that right now Gukes has won the open board at one and I was Sadostro from Uzbekistan is at number two and Magnus Carlsen is at number three. So this video is primarily for those who are learning chess and we are going to learn the chess and this is video series number two. Yesterday we covered two games of Magnus and that happened in round number two and round number Three. So what happened in round number two, Magnus won, round number three was a drawn and round number four, Magnus won again. And so let us see how he played and what is the game that is going on. So we will start with the game exactly right away because this is Queen's Gambit that is being played by Magnus Carlsen. And we need to see that how we are going to do. So let us start. We will put the music on and put it slightly less and so now Magnus is playing with the white pieces and so hey guys this is Iqbal my passion is chess and if you have not subscribed yet my channel please subscribe it and also don't forget to hit the bell button we are covering the games of Magnus from Fide Chess Olympia 2022 and how he has played and this is classical example of how you should play Queen's Gambit because Magnus Carlsen is playing Queen's Gambit with the white pieces and that is what we need to see so let us come back and start the game and what is happening right now is is magnus over no magnus is not over and we are watching some classical matches and don't forget to subscribe so we have got our viewers right away and now we are starting the game so how to attack like magnus that is the question so we are starting the game right now and so magnus is playing with the white pieces and he plays right now he has gone for knight f3 so this is quite a good move you just make a move this is called uh, in encyclopedia of chess opening it is called jukatart opening a very strong and very powerful opening because right now when you move the knight at f3 you just keep your options open that what black is going to do and so from but Surin, Damba Surin, 2 Federated 2518 is playing with the black pieces, a very strong grandmaster from Mongolia. And he goes for knight f6. So Jukatart opening. So for the viewers, those who are watching at beginners stage, you should remember that this is Jukatart opening. So immediately after uh, Magnus goes for c4. So this is the move that uh, looks for like the Queen's Gambit is primarily d4, c4. But so Magnus uh, tries to text the opponent out of the book and he plays and then transform into some standard openings. So right now let us see what happens. e6 has been played. 
and so this is primarily an Anglo-Indian defense knight's variation and is usually usually known as English opening so when you play this it is called English opening if you play this against e4 then it is French defense so right now we are looking that likely chances that Anglo-Indian defense may happen but let us see what happens right now and Carlson immediately goes for the d4 so c4 was played to look into d4 so now if he plays this the entire opening will, he will superimpose into Queen's Gambit decline and right now if you see this setup is the setup of anti nemzo Indian so Magnus prefers to play anti nemzo Indian and now d5 has been played and now we have entered into uh, anti nimzo Indian defense and primarily the setup is Queen's Gambit decline so let us see when Magnus captures it when he goes for the exchange variation how he tries to control the center and how Batsurain uh, reacts to it and that is very important and that is how we need to look at that how it is happening so this game we are covering from beginner's perspective that what are the opening played and how you are going to learn from it so right now he goes to knight c3 so this is a standard position you develop your first knights and then you go for so right now the best move in the decline is this or you capture this so two options are there and these two options are considered the third option is this and every option has some uh, benefits and some losses because every move you make in chess creates some deficiencies some inaccuracies and sometimes in so we have a comment from about you that he is telling that Abdastudro win in the world one yes you are right Abdastudro on in the world number one so right now we are witnessing some uh, very brilliant moves by Magnus Carlsen. So Magnus Carlsen all together played nine matches which we are going to cover in four video series and Magnus Carlsen has been has been able to won the bronze medal. He could not make it to the gold. Why? Because his team was not able to perform that well in this tournament and FIDE Chess Olympiad is a team event. But all the games that Magnus played was really magnificent and he did really some great things and we are learning from his game so right now what do you think what could be a better move so what views are important right now is that you need to control the center when you are playing a chess openings you need to control the center that is very important so what is the next step that you can do the next step is that you need to develop your minor pieces very important that you need to develop your minor pieces after developing the minor pieces what you need to do you need to do some uh, castling because safety of the king is very important and then after castling you need to develop your complete development using complete development including the major pieces that is very important and once your major pieces development have been done then you need to look to attack so in queen's gambit decline what are the ways that which you can attack sorry i am having a cup of tea we just came from the office and then we are starting so what is important is that you need to capture the uh, you need to attack so right now we are going so let us come back and see what moves have happened right now how it has transposed into the Queen's Gambit decline so knight to f6 knight f3 knight f6 c4 looking from some space e6 uh, Anglo Indian defense immediately goes there anti names of Indian setup is there and now d5 has been played and now knight to c3 and bishop b4 so right now this is the move number four from the blacks perspective but better move we suggest from the theoretical point of view is put your bishop over e7 that is a better situation what Botvinnik used to play but right now 
he has played uh, something different and that's why uh, let's see what are the advantages and disadvantages so what computer suggests here computer suggests that you capture this pawn so what happens you capture this pawn what will happen so if you capture this pawn what you have done is you have given up the center there are two lines here either you go immediately e4 or you go to e3 so probably this is a better move look for defense like this preparation or maybe this and this move can come up bishop to here or bishop can come up over here and that ends up into queen's gambit accepted but now what has happened that knight has been developed and bishop has come to b4 so now what white should do what is the best move for white so in this variation it is suggested you would, that you go for exchange variation if you can and it's better that you go for the exchange variation so it's better that you capture and he captures back if he captures by the knight you immediately attack the knight with this piece if he captures it you captures it he captures it and then a check comes and you lose your bishop so that is not good so what you have to do you have to put your queen at c2 square that is very important that you put your queen at c2 square so let us see what happens right now so what is happening today is that we are witnessing a queen's gambit decline setup and that is being played by the world number one Magnus Carlsen and how can you benefit from it so those viewers who are young and who are trying to understand that from the that is the one way to learn from the games of Grandmaster that you look for uh, something that can help you and after analyzing Queen's Gambit, uh, after analyzing it you can do good and that can help you a lot that is very important that is one way to look and uh, on the games so right now we are witnessing uh, Queen's Gambit decline from the Magnus Carlsen's perspective and that is what is important so I'm just setting down uh, my some setups and I'm sorry I am just uh, okay fine so those viewers who have joined quite late let me go back again so what we are going to do we are witnessing a round number four Norway versus Mongolia a very strong grandmaster is playing federated 2518 against magnus carlsen and what's happening is that we are having something very critical over here so what we need to do is that uh, let us see what moves he have played so he has knight f3 this is called jib third opening so those viewers who are watching this you need to see that this is Juktart opening, knight f6, c4, e6, d4, d5, knight c3, bishop f4. So this, this variation is queen's gambit decline and when the bishop comes out over here, it is called Ragozin defense. And if you put your bishop over here, this is called three knights variation. And this is one of the main line, very strong, that was used to be played by Botvinnik. And now, we are witnessing the Ragozin variation and let us see how Magnus handles this. So what's happening right now? So what's happening right now is, hello Arsh, nice to see you again. So our viewers are commenting and we have got some concurrent viewers. Hey guys, I am not a very big YouTube channel. We are very small YouTube channel and we request you to uh, subscribe our channel and see in the round two what happened Norway uh, won in round one in round two also they won and in round four they drew so uh, in this match uh, Carlson won and Olsen won and the Thari Aryan and Hammer drew against Bilgun Samia and Gundawa so that is what's happening here and we are right now uh, looking for that what's going to happen right now so we are at move number 
very important we are at move number four and moves have been made so let us see now so Carlson goes for this bishop moves and this is what it is usually told in Queen's Gambit decline that the dark square bishop comes here and pins this knight and it's very important even if it is attacked theoretically it is told that you retreat and don't retreat in this direction but there are some traps with this uh, f4 bishop f4 idea you look to attack with this knight once your knight is out of pin that you can do but right now see magnus what he is doing he is playing perfect game and he has made no inaccuracies no mistakes and no blunders in this game and that's why from beginner's perspective it is very important that we can learn from this that is very important that we can learn from these games so right now what we are having is that uh, h6 has been played so right now the bishop has been challenged the threat has been created and if you are learning this from uh, opening per, 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 uh, repertoire remember that you retreat this bishop you don't capture you don't come in this side it is better to come here come here uh, and create some deficiencies so what happens if this comes here and attack it is usual function and this knight comes over here so that is a deficiency in the black scam that is not good that is not good at all so what is happening that you need to uh, remember these basic steps if you try you are building your opening repertoire what you need to do is you need to build your opening repertoire you need to build your opening repertoire and then you can improve your game so if you are really uh, interested in building your opening repertoire we have a video on d4 openings in the playlist d4 openings and you can go there and watch it and learn from there so right now let us see what's happening we are witnessing magnus carlson playing queen's gambit and we are at move number five so right now he retreats back that is what recommended in the theory and that's nice move by magnus and we are just witnessing magnus carlson praying queen's gambit decline without any inaccuracies without any mistakes without any blunders that's the beauty of magnus carlson and that's why we are covering all the games of magnus carlson in the series called the thunder this this series we have nomenclature is thunder because it is going to teach you the queen's gambit and also it is going to teach you in the other game that how stunning met he did against one of the very young and promising player from Zambia, the gillian bavalia gillian he is one of the young and very promising player a very good friend of mine and now he castles so in this opening blacks get to castles early and white has got some good pieces over here some attacking positions but how to attack and when to attack should you not exchange this should he captures it these are the questions that come into your mind when you are playing the queen's gambit and queen's gambit is one of the very very robust openings it is played by almost all the grandmasters who have become world champion and the role model games you can take from the Botvinnik and Kare game that is very nice game and Botvinnik has actually developed this system and he has developed the fundamental principles of minority attack when to do minority attack and how to do majority attack this f4 and e4 idea so right now let us see how Carlson plays the Queen's Gambit declined so we are now he goes for e3 so right away e3 has been played and it is a nice move clearing a space to develop your bishop and remember one thing without taking this bishop out you don't go for e3 because that will make your bishop bad bishop so you need to understand that it's the opening you make moves you make choices then don't make your bishop bad so that is very important and now he goes for knight bd7 so in this opening it is very important that this square square h7 square i will mark it blue because the entire game rotates about that and the entire game rotates about the center so what you need to do is you need to control the center and we teach our students in our 
systematic chess club that how you can control the center and there are ways to practice and you can practice from at leeches.org we have uh, so many thousands at leeches.org that can help you improve and you can you choose the opening quiz gambit decline and then you can solve the puzzles on it so that you make the right choices and you can improve your games and in return hey guys my 95 percent viewers are not subscribed I don't understand why they don't subscribe it's completely free what are you waiting for come on hit the subscribe button hit the bell button that is very important for me that's the way how you can put likes and help me spread my chest and that is how I am going to give you some good work on chess that will help you improve your game, improve your rating if you are a non-professional and you are playing at leeches.org or you are playing at chess.com, these videos are going to help you. So now he goes for the exchange variation. So it's better to exchange at the earliest stage, but Carlson has opted it at move number eight. So see, Carlson is going for the exchange at move number eight. He waited for him to capture him. He did not go for that. And so right now he captures and he captures it back. So exchange at the center have happened. The C file is now half open and E file is now half open. So you need to remember these two things that right now you have two files which are semi open files. If you are able to open it, then you need to put your rooks on the open file. Rooks belongs to open file. That is the key that rooks belong to open file. So what's happening right now? Let us see that we are having right now a very good uh, game and let us see the graph. So right now the graph is showing no uh, any uh, white is at advantage so if you play this set if you play this setup even along with a very very strong opponent you are at advantage you are not at a disadvantage that is what we need to learn and right now what could be a good move over here what should Magnus play if you are Magnus what do you think what should you play that is the question so let us evaluate the position so this is a pin this knight is doing good this is under pin but it is under safety by this so at this situation there can be two moves you need to complete your development so first you develop your minor pieces and then you develop your major pieces so this bishop is not developed yet and it is hindering your castling and that's why your knight is under pin so at this stage from development perspective this could be a good choice and in queen's gambit decline remember the light square bishop belongs to d3 that is very important that light square bishop belongs to d3 and let us see what magnus played magnus played bishop to d3 so he is playing nothing different wall number one is following the fundamental principles of queen's gambit decline oh hi my dear brother asif iqbal is there watching this video live and he has sent me hi assalamu alaikum hope you are doing good and we are today witnessing Queen's Gambit decline and we are watching how the bishop goes there. So you can ask me the questions if you are watching this video live or you can put the questions in the comment box and I will try to reply from the theoretical aspects of chess. The chess is a game of intelligence and strategy but simultaneously chess is also a game of knowledge it is a subject that needs to be studied and so those who have joined late i will just go to this move position that can help you so this this is how it has been superimposed to queen's gambit decline and now he so in the this setup remember the knights are here and then the bishop comes over here this is called queen's gambit decline regozin variation bishop pins the knight this is you have to move prior to moving this so that you don't make your bishop bad and now at six questioning the bishop you don't retreat on this diagonal here you retreat in this diagonal that is suggested so that you can produce the, if he comes and attack you there are two three traps that you can use because knight at h5 always gives some to you some tactical ideas that you can apply so right now he castles e3 has been played looking for bishop and castling and now the black plays knight to be d7 and what happens 
C captures D5, E captures D5, and so there at this stage, what moves are possible? So right now, you don't go for this queen idea. It's also a good move, but you need to develop in such a way that your third fundamental principle is achieved, that is, castling is done. And so Carlson, the world champion, goes for bishop d3, c6, and now castles. So now both the teams have castled and minor pieces are developed the only right now who is better why computer says white is better can you see can you see this bishop let me put it in blue this is very very active and can you see this bishop how is this it has nowhere to go it's a bad bishop it's not developed you you need to move this knight or you need to play this immediately to develop this bishop on this diagonal so there are two three ways through which you can do that but right now everything appears fine the pin has been removed however this pin is still there so right now white has two advantages the one advantage is this bishop and the other advantage is this pin of the knight and this development requires the movement of this knight or this knight and that's why in this setup this is what the beauty of Queen's Gambit decline is that it gives you advantage in development, positional advantage. So different players are primarily positional players and see you can evaluate that how you are gaining these advantages. So right now Magnus Carlsen has played castling and at this stage we evaluate this board position and we understand that Magnus Carlsen is playing the Queen's Gambit decline perfectly. And that can help you learn because he has made zero inaccuracies, zero mistakes and zero blunders. And that's why I am here to show you this game so that you can benefit from this game. And I am really enjoying this game. Watching and telling about this game is really, really marvelous. And Magnus is really magnificent. Let us go for... So now he realizes that this is not a quite good move. He returns looking for some attack over here and maybe some discovery over here because if he goes and discover and so there can be a trick here see if you go if you uh, he captures and you capture it back then you might lose your uh, bishop although both winning and carry the role model game that we will be covering in the fundamental principles that how Botvinnik realized that moving the bishop over here or here is not a good move and basically see what's happened. He is looking what is the idea, what is the tactics over here. So if you don't do anything, suppose you make a normal move like this, suppose you make a move like this, so what he is going to do? He is going to capture it with a check. What you will go, what you will do, you may capture it with this and you may capture with this. So that tactics is applied because now you may give him a check and if he comes somewhere here or here maybe it goes down so this queen is coming over here so that is the hidden motive of the bishop over here let us see is that hidden motive is applicable on Carlson? no he understand I will I will delete and he develops and uh, the queen to d2 and again in Queen's Gambit decline, the development of the Queen is either on C2 or on E2. So remember these two locations, Kasparov, a very strong grandmaster, used to put his Queen over here. And Botvinnik used to put the Queen over here because he loves this battery. This bishop is going to give a check over there and many nasty attacks are going to come very quickly. So he, Magnus goes for the development, he's not worried about this because this is a very well evaluated position because this knight is guarding it. So now what Damba Suren does from Mongolia, he develops the knight. So now he is looking that this, if uh, I must look for development, Magnus has is uh, ahead in development and he is at advantage right now if you see the computers plus 0.8 you get over here and so that's he develops and now magnus puts his rook over here so you need to remember this where is your f rook belongs in queen's gambit decline the f rook in this setup belongs to e file because at likely you are going for some attack at the center and this attack is called 
majority attack if you attack by putting the rook at b file and you go with this idea this is called minority attack because this pawn setup is very strong and to break that pawn setup you need to launch a minority attack or if you want to invade in these reasons you need to go for majority attack and at some stage you need to play e4 followed by f3 f4 f5 and if you are able to do so there is no going back you are certainly going to win this you are certainly going to win this there is no going back right away so what happens now he realizes his mistake so what we see if you have put your bishop over here now you come with the bishop over here and now you come your bishop over here and this has been studied thousand times that the bishop belongs to e7 when you are playing queen's gambit decline you put the bishop over there there is a mainline theory that bishop e7 is a peculiar variety of queen's gambit bishop e7 move uh but winning where says carry there are three games and there are the more role model games and if uh, times permits we will go through that or we will put it in the videos that can benefit from uh, you can benefit from there so now knight comes back bishop he looks at any time discovery attack is coming because there is a battery here is a battery so right now he comes back so if immediately if bishop is here and if he is not launching a g5 idea you immediately come over here this is better this is very active square so can you evaluate the position who is better see he has a very very active light square bishop and he has a very very active dark square bishop he's controlling so many squares and so computer suggest that white is an advantage of 0.8 that is important so now what happens so in queen's gambit decline you go over there so that you defend this and now this knight is defending this or you can put the knight here so that you can disable this battery and now you can go for some attack so right now magnus don't want that he at this stage it is preferable that either you put over here or this moves you may do because there is a likely chances if knight comes here it can fork this you have to keep in mind that you don't allow the knight to come here and here also you don't allow the knight to come here because after some discovery maybe here this pawn is bound to fall so to stop that what you can do you can go for s3 let us see what magnus does here and what magnus does he goes for s3 that's the correct move, absolutely perfect, and that's why he has made no blunders, no mistakes, no inaccuracies, and that is the beauty of uh, learning the opening repertoire. And we are reading Queen's Gambit decline here, and now b6. So now he thinks that now let me uh, get this bishop out, maybe coming over here once to exchange, but right now there is no defender of this space, so maybe he will put over here and then look to attack the center. So that can be one way and let us see what he does. So Magnus has launched the attack. E4 has been played. So this is the right position to play E4. You need to put, you need to get that time that when you can attack. So E4 has been played and Damba Surain playing with the black pieces captures it. So now you have two choices. You can capture with this, you can capture with this, you can capture with the rook. So what are you going to do? How will you capture it? Will you capture it with the bishop? Will you capture it with the rook? Or will you capture it with the knight? So what? who is defending this square? You need to calculate that. So this knight is defending this square. So what will you do if the knight is defending that square? It's better to capture by the knight because after the capture you may put the bishop on this very strong diagonal or you may come up with the rook and then you may double the rook on this open file. So remember the rook belongs to open file and if you are able to double the rooks on the open file you are very strong. Recently Pragnanda won from nowhere because he was able to double the rooks on a file. So these are the fundamental principles that which is going to help you. And right now, knight captures on e4, and bishop comes bishop. So uh, this is the first inaccuracy made by Tamba Suren of Mongolia, federated 251 at a very strong player. 
and let us see why it's an accuracy what was the better move so he should have developed the bishop over here so if you are playing with the black misses remember you put your bishop over here this is an active square you are quite sufficiently going because the, if he is going to move this pawn somewhere you are going to be in a pawn you can launch attack and this is controlling more number of squares so you need to put your pieces on active squares from where your pieces are controlling more numbers of squares so that is a good move and then knight e5 would have been played according to the computers and then the bishop comes over here so this is the maneuvering to keep your bishop on a strong diagonal and here you are nullifying the advantage of the white now he immediately comes back tries to attack it and so knight comes uh, bishop again comes here so now he has he has pinned it he has two attacks so these moves are given by stock face and so in this way this could have occurred at this position but it does not happen he looked for bishop to this move and carlson played knight to e5 so at some point you need to move this knight out so that you can blow f3, f4 and that is very important. You have one isolated pawn. The knights are sitting in the center controlling so many squares. So, hello viewers, can you see how many squares these knights are controlling? So many squares. These knights are monsters and this is what Carlson is playing. And the last this is played uh, between very, very strong grandmaster. A Carl Thurston, uh, I think, international master against all of her in 99. This game was played, and now he has come over here and knight to e6. And so, from after this knight move, this is altogether a new problem. So, what is going to Magnus do now? The problem is new, the game is out of the book, and you have to find some plan. So what is a plan in the chess? So when you are in the middle game, near about move number 1 to 10 to 12, you need to play the opening repertoire you have played because the possibilities are infinite. And after from 12 to 16, you should be looking for plan. How to make a plan? So let us see what he is going to do. Can he do some exchange? Can he go for this exchange? Is it going to help you? Can you evaluate it? How it is going to help you? So now you need to take out the pieces who are defenders. So who is defending this square? This knight is defending this square. Earlier, prior to this move, what was happening? There were two defenders. So this exchange was not going to work. Why? Because if you exchange it, this bishop will be active, but still this square is in the defense. Right now, he made the move. And immediately, Carlsen knows now that h7 has only one defender and that defender is this knight. And what should I do? I should remove that defender. And how can I remove it? It's a check. And now he has gone for a check. What a move this is. Because right now, after capturing of this, this bishop is going to invade inside. If you're going to block this, that queen is coming inside. And Nazi games is going on. So attack has been launched he captures it and he goes for a check and this is what is very important that in the queen's gambit declined or queen's gambit slav defense you look for this h7 idea you look to attack on h7 so he moves there it's not good to come this side it's better to go this side so that you if you some nasty comes you may escape but what happens now what Carlson does he now develops the Rook to defile, and now he is going to move this pawn. And now he, his knight is sitting at a very strong position. If you capture it, he's going to capture it back. So, what will happen? He captures it. So, what should you do? Okay, should you capture with this or should you capture with this? Both the moves are good. The computer suggests to capture it by the bishop. What will happen if you capture it by the bishop? Let us go through some of the moves. He comes over here and then you are going to put this queen over here. He comes ahead and then you retrieve. And this could have been the moves because right now you need to defend. He comes here and some moves go on like this and that's how he returns. So this could have been some lines but it does not happen. And Magnus, what he did, he captured by this attacking the queen quite a good move not a bad move and so what should have he done 
he should have gone for the queen to e7 and that is what he has done and now immediately it's playing f4 so now magnus has a very strong he has nearly won the center he but Damba Surin from Mongolia needs to do something. He has not followed the theory. He has not put the bishops at the right squares. But so far, Magnus is strictly following the theory of Queen's Gambit decline. And if you are able to follow the theory, and if you are able to grasp the ideas that both Winnick and Keres played in the 1950 World Championship, you are surely going to improve your game and you are surely going to stun some of your opponents by defeating them. Hey guys, I am Iqbal, my passion is chess and if you have not subscribed yet, I request you to please subscribe my channel. My 95% viewers are not subscribed. I don't understand why they don't subscribe and please don't forget to hit the bell button because hit, that can notify you. We stream on usually uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, Friday at 9 p.m. IST and uh, that we plan the games that can benefit you. Right now we are doing four game series uh, on Magnus Carlsen and let us see what happens in the game right now. So what the move you are going to make? So he has to move a black to move and he now activates his bishop. See he took so many uh, time to activate the bishop. Quite a good move. But what could be the better move for white at this stage? What you are going to do? If you have a good move, you look to make the move more better. And so might be pushing this F pawn is going to... So your king is safe, very safe, because the dark square bishops are out of the board. Attack from the dark square cannot come. And so he pushes it. So Magnus is launching the attack. The majority attack is going on. He is attacking. He is, his pawns are attacking the opponent. Now we, what can you do? You have to move it. You have to move it. And where you can go? He finds knight to d4. Now he has been able to put the knight on a very strong square. But Magnus has, moves the queen because this is attacking the queen and he moves here. Safeguarding this pawn twice and looking to again move further and what he does he this is not a good move it's a mistake uh queen to d8 was probably a better move and then bishop to f4 as per the computers but he has moved the uh, queen to d7 and just because of the pawn so the pawns of magnus are very powerful right now and how it's going to happen and e6 so what he is doing man he is just moving his pawns because he is moving the pawns because he has completely developed his pieces and he is now launching the attacks with the pawn so when you make the pawn movement when you are launching the attack so what to do now he moves he does not capture this what would have happened if he captures it and so let us see what happens if he captures it. So right now, there there was, uh, suppose he captures it. So what's going to happen? You capture it with a check and you win immediately the queen. If you come here, it's a mate. If you come here, you are going to lose it. And the threat remains there. So that's why it was not good to capture Despite capturing, it's better to move. If you capture it, this is going to capture. So what a move by Magnus. Really a magnificent Magnus. Oh, what he's doing. He's really playing some wonderful chase and we are learning from him. So now he looks to some makeup battery and there is a threat. If this queen is not able to guard this, it's going to be a myth. So this is the highest level of chess that is being done. But now what Magnus is going to do? He puts the bishop over here attacking this knight and he is not worried right now of this attack now he comes here developing the rook attacking the center and what's going to happen next magnus goes here so the best move computer suggests that right now you sacrifice and you sacrifice and the game would have gone like this but that is not what he did he, he is keeping the queen Magnus moves the queen over there and now he comes with a nasty check. What is the trick? If you capture it, 
he captures it back and that is what happens in the game so right now he moves the king up so magnus is down a rook the opponent has two rooks but that's the beauty of queen's gambit decline it gives you a very strong positional advantage even if you are down a rook you are going to win it and he goes there and magnus could have captured this pawn attacking from here but he went for this and at this stage bamba suren resigned and that is my question to my viewers why did Bamba Suren resign at this stage? Why? Why he resigned it? Can you find the winning streak from here? Why he resigned it? So what happens? Let us evaluate it. If he captures, he captures. If you capture from here, it's a checkmate. Check. You go there. It's a check. And a mate. Because you cannot come over here, you cannot come over here. What other things can happen? See why he resigned. The Grand Master resigns for a cause. Other way, you could have come over here. He captures and gains a queen. What a wonderful move. You capture it back. He captures your queen. And now you are down a queen. And definitely you are going to get checkmated very soon. You come here. You capture it. And then he captures your pawn. But you are not afraid. You go for a check. He goes there, now you capture it and you are with a queen and a very strong pass pawn and you are certainly going to win. So now what other options could have been? So that move that Magnus made can be analyzed infinite many times. So this move, this move what makes Magnus something different from books. So this move, you make any move, any move at this stage Damba Suren makes he is going at a disadvantage and he is going to lose it. So that is what all about the first game that we discussed. And now we are going to discuss the game of round 5. So what happened? Norway won first 2-3 rounds and then they started depreciating. So the third round, fifth round is between Zambia and Norway. A very strong player, Gillian Baula is playing against magnus carlson and let me take you to that game and prior to that i need to talk to my viewers and yes i need some water so right now you are going to witness a very powerful game and what you need to do is so let me tell you about the game this game is round number five between jambia and magnus carlson And we are learning from the games of Magnus. So right now this game Norway won. And so far so good. Magnus was appearing so far at the board number one. And uh, Norway was playing well. And we are evaluating that how Magnus has got the branch. And what were the reasons for him getting the branch. So right now uh, what happens is that let me have some music. Let me slow down the music, not good. So this game is between Baula Gillian, Federated 2396. He won the International Master and he is a very strong player from Zambia, a very, very young boy. And he is uh, from Africa, a very strong and a very good, 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 good friend of mine. He is developing, he is improving. I hope he does wonders in recent games. And so today in the day number two, the video series, nine games to know by heart of Magnus. We have already covered the Queen's Gambit decline. And now let us see what is going to happen in this game. So every day we are covering two games. So Baula Gilia in play, Gillian is playing with white pieces and Magnus is playing with the black pieces and we will read this game from the black's perspective. So I have flipped the board and now let us see what happens. So Magnus against d4 always opts this move. Sometimes he goes for this move also, but today he is playing knight to f3. So what do you think? about this what is this opening called so this is very old opening from and this is called indian defense if against d4 you play this knight you wait to watch 
what the opponent is going to play and then you look for so Babylon Gillian is very he tweeted that he is very proud that he is playing with the world number one at Fidel Chess Olympia 2022 in Chennai and he played c4 so he is a young player and he is not going to experiment much he tries to play the theory now see when the magnus got how he exploits an opponent's weakness and how is you should be ready to find out the weakness in the opponent's cap that is very important if you are able to find the weakness in the opponent's camp it means that you are going to do very very good and so what's happening right now we are so magnus goes for this so he is looking for this nimdo indian defense so definitely you can see in the indian defense this is the normal variation and there can be this move fiancha to the bishop this is king's indian defense we have a full video on this opening you can watch over there if you want to learn it or it's better you evaluate your position on your board and give me your doubts and your queries that what are going to be good move because we are reading from the encyclopedia of chess openings and we are putting it forward to you so that you can benefit from it and how you can help me you can help me by subscribing my channel i am a very small youtube channel and 95 percent of my viewers are not subscribed and the subscription is completely free and systematic chess is bound to spread chess free throughout the globe we want to spread systematic way of playing chess uh free systematic chess will never charge these videos are completely free you can learn from it and if you want that people should learn these openings from our videos and you feel that these are very effective videos please help me by putting some like and sharing these videos that is going to help me thank you so much and also i like to thank my subscribers we have crossed 500 subscribers and that's really very um, awesome for me and that thanks a lot for uh, being here and I, I will try to reach the expectations that you are expecting from me and now knight comes to c3 fundamental moves going on looking for some decline and magnus plays d5 so right the first match we saw magnus playing from the white pieces Queen's Gambit decline setup, normal variation, and now we are saying man seeing we are witnessing, we are analyzing Magnus playing with the black pieces, the Queen's Gambit decline. That's why I made this thumbnail. And I must I always tell the, my viewers about my thumbnail that uh, what's uh, what I why I made this thumbnail. So this is a game where Magnus is playing in the part one with the white pieces and in the part two Magnus is playing with the black pieces and so this is very wonderful from the beginner's perspective to learn. What's happening right now Magnus is playing with the black pieces and what's going to happen let us see that is very important what is going to happen and how uh, right now the best move is knight to f3 and Gillian Baula from Zambia goes for that, a very good friend of mine. And now he is also trying to uh, look into the theory. So now you, you will realize even if you are playing with the white pieces and if you make slight uh, inaccuracy or slight mistake, Magnus is going to throw you down. He is not going to leave you. And he goes to Bishop. So Magnus has gone for the dragons in defense. Usually uh, this is the better square. So let us see how Magnus handles this, whether he comes back over here or whether he is going to get some break if some inaccuracy has been made. And so he develops, see those moves are almost similar what Magnus made with the white pieces. And that is what Federated 2396 Gillian Baula is doing. He is also doing perfect magnus castles in the last game also the castling was there e3 has been played a3 now this move magnus did not question it i think in that game magnus did not question it he was by himself moving in this square but uh, it's a theory that you question this bishop and 
he captures it so this is what this bishop does this is the difference between magnus and the other players he is following the theory you don't retreat if you are playing with the black pieces you just capture this knight because when this knight comes in these squares it is monstrous so what you do in this setup you capture it and that is what magnus is doing and now he captures with the pawn so he has a double pawn and what you good to do so magnus immediately goes for this move and this is very very a strong move and now the game is completely nimzo indian defense normal variation and he has immediately questioned the center that white is holding and if you are playing against queen's gambit setup this c5 idea is very very strong remember the c5 idea at some point of you of time you try to attack the center with the c5 idea and it is going to help you he captured he developed the bishop actually what could have been the best move for him he he could have uh, put the bishop over here uh, but he went for bishop to d3 and that is a fundamental move because if he captures it uh, why i said you need to put the bishop over here because if this pawn captures it it is producing an immediate attack and at the move number eight itself you are going to move your pieces twice which is not good not good it is not good and that's why uh, it is suggested that you put your bishop over here if you like his chances over there and Magnus does not leave the chance he grabs it and you have to grab it but you have lost a tempo because you have to move your pieces twice the, and it's not advisable that you make one piece movement twice that's not good queen to c7 knight d2 so now queen he has put at c7 and knight goes at d2 knight c6 so he develops his knight his this bishop is still a problem let us see how he solves it white castles and he comes at d file so now he is looking to attack on the center from this if you capture it your knight will be pinned and then f4 is it a good move no it's an inaccuracy bishop b2 was a better move developing should have been done but Gillian Baula has launched the attack so this is the difference you need to launch the attack once you have done your development complete if your development is not complete you are not going to win so right now that is an inaccuracy he has moved and uh, right now what has happened let me check f4 has been played and this is not the right time to play f4 if i will flip the board and see from the white's perspective is this the right move no it's not right move your rooks are not developed your bishop is not developed your queen is not developed your bishop is not sitting at the right position from the theoretical point of view so why mr gillian why you were doing it what is the thought behind it so you need to prepare it back my dear friend and I will separately write it to you. Uh, we are very good friends at Facebook and I will write this to you that this is what uh, is not good for you at this early stage. You are praying against world number one and you are launching a pawn attack creating deficiencies in your own camp and probably it's not good for you you are going to regret for it very soon very quickly in this match let us see what magnus does the f4 has been played and magnus plays this knight over here he has realized that some mistake have been done but now he is setting up a trap to invade inside the, the opponent camp this is slight and inaccuracy he captures, he captures, and now e file. See this pawn, see this pawn. This pawn was defending it. You need to keep it there. You need to develop after, you need to put it ahead after some strategical uh, position, but no. And what is this move, Gillian? What are you doing against the world champion number one? He's not going to leave you. He is not going to leave you, man. What are you playing? You are looking for a checkmate with a queen alone? And leaving all your pieces to hang uh, uh, there? You are playing against 
Magnus Carlsen and now Magnus will punish you. He captures, you capture, he retreats his knight. Let us see the moves and then we will reevaluate. Knight comes f3. He is looking for this move. Magnus has read it. Magnus goes there defending this pawn and you cannot capture it because he is going to capture it. But simultaneously he is going to launch attack also. Bishop to d2, f6. What is this? Why he has moved this? Can you see? Can you see? Can you find what has made him move this? He don't your knight. He don't want your knight to come over there. Knight h4. And so, if he has not allowed you to come over here, you will go here. Now, Gillian, this is not acceptable. You are a very bright player. You are a very young player, 18 years old from Zambia. You are going to become a grandmaster very soon. You might be end up in uh, winning the world championship. You have that potential. But what you are doing is you are not following the basic principles. You are trying to checkmate Magnus Carlsen with a queen and the knight with all the pieces on the board. Come on, man. Grow up. It's not a fun. That is Magnus Carlsen. And he is world number one because of this maneuvering. So right now he is looking for this attack. F5. Again you are moving it. You are not looking for your... What is this rook doing over here? Don't you feel, Gillian, that you should look at this rook? And my dear viewers, those who are rated players around 2000 or less can learn from the games of Magnus Carlsen. And right now, f5 has been played. See, Magnus is developing his rook. He's improving his bad pieces. And you can do well by... So, assalamu alaikum, uh, my dear sister, Israt Kasmi is there. She is doing thumbs up. My family members are watching it to improve my uh, small YouTube channel. Hey, guys, if you are watching it, don't forget to subscribe it. We are witnessing... The games of Magnus Carlsen, we have four video series and I am a very small YouTube channel. You can help me by subscribing it. Right now, we are evaluating the Queen's Gambit decline played by Magnus Carlsen. The first match that he played was played with the white pieces and the second match we are witnessing he is playing with the black pieces. And that is how you can learn and improve your games. He is improving his pieces and now he comes here putting, so this is a good move. Putting the bishop on an outpost uh, is a very strong idea. And so immediately he disables him. If you capture, you capture it. And so he captures the strong knight, which was actually defending this square, uh, uh, this pawn. And now what is happening, he captures it, he captures it back. And some stunning entry is going to come. And now he comes the rook with this idea. Now he comes with the rook. Gillian is looking to checkmate. He is playing quite well. So far he has also not made any mistakes, any blunders. Gillian Baula, you are a very strong player. And you have played wonderfully against Magnus Carlsen. Despite the early moves that we don't see that were promising as a grandmaster's game but this move is quite well and now magnus is entering into your campus this piece is very bad and rook to e1 now gillian is looking to develop the rook so that he defends it because this was attacking so this he meant to attack and so magnus right now leaves his camp goes there attacking the pawn twice so he has attacking the pawn twice but you can also see a hidden move he's holding this square this rook can come here you have to capture it then he's coming with a check you come up here he is holding so many good squares and that's the beauty of and here he did not worry for his defense he should have come back so that if he comes he captures and he did not do that and that's why he goes down he captures it and can you see can you see can you see can you see the fall can you see now checkmate is unavoidable if you go here it's a check come here that is the stunning by Daniel Hey guys, I
by my passion in chess and what you need to do you need to write to me if what they're studying in this career and really a stunning myth really a stunning myth something very something bad so hey guys don't forget to subscribe hit the bell button and i need to talk to you people that i am a very small youtube channel thank you all for subscribing to my channel and yes we will continue tomorrow at 9 pm thunder and this episode is a thunder but you can learn and we will meet tomorrow at 9 pm for this and we are also having some other series if you hit the bell button you will get notified when i go live streaming 